As we back up and we begin to look at some of these things, again, there's a few that we're going to look at here on the front side and uh, uh, spend more time later on down through here. But uh, uh, Paul, is, as, as he writes and he begins saying this, and he uh, he says here in 8, it says, I am uh, less than the least uh, of all saints. Is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles? But in, he's saying this, uh, uh, he is presenting this manner of humility in a manner of uh, being undeserving in uh, things of that nature that he is just, uh, uh, he, he is recognizing that he is just a man and he is able to do these things through Christ but he says that he is able to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and that's part of what we're going to look at here and it's something that uh, uh, quite honestly as Christian people you should be able to be excited about is what those unsearchable riches of Christ are but it says he goes on to say and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Christ Jesus. Now, again, we'll look at this as a matter of what the church is able to do. And you get on down here in a little bit and he's talking about the uh, uh, the, the powers and principalities in heavenly places. So this would be angelic beings. These would be those that already know God, that uh, know that fellowship and know these things. But to everyone else, they don't really get to see it. Uh, and it's talking about what the church is able to do in uh, uh, the, the church and it's uh, 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 what the ability that they have, the unique ability that the church has as a, as a group, as that uh, moving body for Christ is able to show exactly what God is able to do. And uh, pause, let me read here for just a moment. But it says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Now, before we move on down, the specific things that the church uh, is able to do, we made mention of some of those. Going back over the last several weeks, we've talked about many of those things. But if there's nothing else that the church can do, the church can purely represent the love that God has for his people. And not just for his people, but that's for all people. That's for all those that his son came and died for. And who did Jesus come and die for? All. It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, we can see that in the church, and no matter what uh, uh, mainstream media attempts to uh, uh, begin to send out that the church is little uh, uh, breeding pools of hate, that is not what the church is here to represent. It is not any type of division. It's not any type of hate, because as you read on down, uh, we can find a... a, a of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. All these are for Christ. Uh, it does not say that uh, only certain uh, types of people or uh, this person or that person can be saved, but Jesus came and he died for all. He came to seek and to save those that were lost. The Bible says we have all sinned and came short of the glory of God. So all means every man. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. What is the mystery here that we look at? You can look at this in, in, in many different capacities, in many different elements of what that is, but quite honestly, to a lost individual, the mystery is simply the, the, the feeling of hope and uh, security that believers have. That is a mystery unto them. When you look at uh, uh, things uh, in times of uh, 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 uncertainty and troubles that, that, that may uh, uh, be coming or we may be in, and the fact that we can be content, that is mysterious to many people. But what it, why is it that we're able to do that? And that's when you come into what we talked about last week and what the gospel is able to do for you and how you can advance the gospel. But it says to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now, under the principalities and powers in heavenly places, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
We can see that all these things hinge upon Christ. You can go back into Genesis and you can, uh, from there in the beginning, you can see how each thing in the Old Testament is pointing towards Christ. It's talking about how the church must be centered around Christ. Uh, you look at uh, uh, what, G or what uh, Jason has been teaching through Sunday school and it's talking about how uh, he is in the midst of the uh, seven uh, uh, the, 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 the candlesticks and the stars and then this and that. But it's uh, uh, when you want to, if you can kind of give yourself a visual, that has all these things uh, uh, around Christ with Christ in the center. And, uh, uh, Jesus should be the, the, the central purpose of the church. And, uh, uh, the church should be willing to go forth and do what Christ would have them to do. But it says, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith in him. Who is him? Again, that's back to Jesus. But it says, wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you which is your glory, and then he changes gears. You go back into the uh, first part of this chapter, and uh, uh, you can kind of see where uh, Paul is, uh, uh, is uh, he, he explains some things out, but he is starting with this concern uh, for this uh, uh, church that is here, but now he says, for this cause... In this prayer that he prays, as you read on down through here, this is uh, uh, unique and interesting, and uh, it's... Uh, uh, again, it's something that we're going to look at uh, uh, for just a short time here this morning. But it says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we are understanding. He's identifying. And you can go back into uh, how Jesus taught to pray and things like this. But you can see exactly uh, who, uh, if you will, who Paul is praying to. But he, and he is recognizing the, the deity that is there. He's recognized the, the, the power, the control coming down into uh, 15 of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. But then in 16, uh, he, he, he gets specific. But he says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. And when you look at that, and to be strengthened by spirit, the inner man, that's not just your um, thought processes. That's not just, you know, your uh, 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 demeanor, if you will. That's not your mood. That's not uh, uh, how you would react to elements that would be around you. When he's talking about this, he desires that your spirit be strengthened. That desire within you, that uh, uh, that true connection that you and I have with Christ. When you look at these things, and uh, uh, it's talking about how we are given the Holy Spirit, and the, uh, it dwells within us. And you look at that; that is our our, our strong uh, connected point, if you will, unto God. And you look at that, and that. That is what uh, Paul is desiring to be strengthened, and it's not the physical form. It's not the, the 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 outer man, if you will. It's not the shell. It's not the health. It's not the this, and it's not that. But he says he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. The, and if the inner man is strengthened, and if we have our th that that strong spiritual connectedness with God, that means that no matter what is going on around us, no matter what it is that we see, no matter what that we are exposed to, no matter the elements, the circumstances that uh, uh, can come before us, that means that we will be reliant upon Christ. And you think of that and you look at it and again, uh, uh, Brother Jason was giving us some good insights into these churches and these times and the persecution and things that they faced. Why would you not want the physical form to be strengthened? Why would you not want them to be safe from this or to be safe from that? Because again, all these things are merely temporary. All these things are temporal. It's only here for a while. Paul had that understanding and he wanted what was going to live on. That's the part that he wanted strengthened. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Now he had some other key factors that are in there that now we're going to back up and look at. According to the riches of his glory, again, that would be Christ and to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Christian people, there's nowhere else that we should look for any of these things other than to Christ. People can say the right things. People can have an, an aura about them that may make you feel more uh, bold or uh, uh, we'll go with bold. 
But the fact of the matter is they are still man. Man has the ability to, uh, uh, to be wrong for their motives to be this or that. Again, we looked at that last week. But what Paul is praying, that we turn not unto man, but we turn unto God, that the riches of his glory and to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. But he don't stop there. He goes on and he says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, and depth, and height. Now, he, he begins talking about these things. You go back and you're talking about the mystery that was there. Uh, you can go back into uh, uh, things that we've heard so many times that are said that faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of God. It says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Uh, the, the, what is it that... Uh, 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 let me try to be brief here as we go through this because, again, these are all things that we, are, uh, we should know. Uh, but when we're talking about salvation and uh, how we're able to attain that, well, you don't just say, well, I, I want salvation. I want to be saved. That's faith in believing in who God is, what God is, uh, uh, who Christ is, what it is that he's done for you. That's faith in the gospel that we talked about last week in its entirety. That's faith in believing that even though you wasn't around when any of this stuff happened, but it is believing that everything written in here did happen happened just the way this says it did and things that are going to happen just the way uh, this book says that it's going to that is faith you can get into Hebrews I want to think it's in the 11th chapter and you can get a good definition of faith But again, Paul is praying and he prays that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith so he is praying that we as a church and as a group and as a, uh, as a congregation and as a church here in Everson, as he's praying that they as a whole increase their faith in Christ. We uh, talked about this briefly last week too, that oftentimes our faith is not going to be strengthened in all good times. Again, you go back and he is praying that we are strengthened in the inner man. And that you being rooted and grounded in love. Why is that key? Well, you can find more things about this when you get into First uh, John and other places. Uh, uh, why we should love our brothers. Uh, uh, things of that. Uh, you know, uh, uh, God is love. Uh, again, these are all things that we should know that we have heard so many times that uh, uh, we've talked about on uh, uh, multiple different occasions. But now we can also see a, a, a second thing that has happened is uh, uh, as Paul is uh, uh, praying through this, and number one, he's asked uh, uh, that, that, you know, that we are, that the Spirit strength, uh, strengthen our spirit. And now we're seeing here that Christ is involved. And now we've got two of the Trinity that is in here. Uh, it says, being rooted in the ground and in love, that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. When you look at that, what Paul is desiring the church to be able to do is to see the big picture. Not the small part on the front end. But when he says the, 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 the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height, that's looking at every aspect. That's not just, well, you know, uh, uh, this. You know, if you went, if you was going to go get you a, a, a piece of furniture or something other and you had a... a, a, a He's going to put it in the back seat of your uh, SUV and you know that it was uh, uh, 48 inches wide and you know that uh, uh, your, your, uh, um, your back seat, that that will fit in there. And you go to pick it up, but then you didn't consider the height of that box and the depth of that box. And it may actually be the, the size of your entire car and you only look at one aspect that was just 48 inches wide. What Paul is desiring the church to do is to be able to see the big picture. And church, we can't see the big picture unless we are focused upon God and what God would have us do and focused upon the accomplishment of God's will. But again, he says that being rooted and grounded in love we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the height. And we're only able to do these things when we have pure motives and when our heart is centered on love and the love for the brethren and the love of God. 
that we may be able to comprehend, again, with all of the, what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, Paul, as we've reached to this point, Paul has now, uh, in, in this prayer that he's praying for the church, that it's not just one part of the Trinity, that it's not just one part of the Godhead, but now Paul is praying for the church in the entirety, that it is affected with the entire uh, Godhead that is there. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, when you begin to think on that, it's hard for us to fathom the fullness of God. We have reached this point, no doubt like we have reached a point in time, so many other times as you go through history, you can almost uh, you can pull out any history book and you can find times when the world has ran rampant with hate. It's hard for us now when you are uh, 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 the only way you're not being force fed these things if you just don't uh, watch any type of uh, uh, news or media. But it's hard for us to be rooted and grounded in love. It would be hard for us to know the fullness of God because even understanding, we, we, we can, uh, again, what has the gospel done for you? Go with me back to last week for just a moment so we can help complete this. When you begin to think of this, what has the gospel done for you? It has helped you realize that God sent his son to die for you as you are, as you were. It wasn't as, uh, uh, you know, you had to do this and you had to do that. Uh, we can recognize in order for us to be saved, we at first had to recognize that we were sinners. We could all, uh, if you're a true born again believer, uh, believer you, you know that you were a sinner. Amen? Amen. You was a sinner and you begin to understand these things. But then you look at all these acts that are taking place and these acts that are uh, essentially motivated by hate. God still sent his son to die for those individuals too. For all those, no matter your opinion, no matter your standpoint, no matter your uh, political party, no matter your view upon this or your view upon that, God sent his son to die for all mankind. Period. And to know the love of Christ, which path is knowledge, that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. Now, to know the love of Christ. Have you ever been able to fathom the fact that as Christ is hanging upon the cross, the very men who done the things to him that the Bible teaches and tells us that it happened, you know, they plucked his beard, they hit him, they uh, 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 mashed the crown of thorns in his head, they beat him, they whipped him. All these things that had happened, and Christ still had the love in his heart to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do understanding that kind of love my opinion I don't think that churches through the ages has ever grasped that kind of love it is so hard for us to, to, to wrap our minds around it is easy for us to want to love and to forgive people who are lovable and ask for forgiveness. Amen? That's easy for us. Jesus even teaches that. But then when you get into the point that uh, those that are hard to love, that's exactly what they are. They are hard to love. And when you get those types of individuals, it is uh, harder for you and I to want to go out of our way to help them, uh, to do this or to do that, or to uh, uh, be that, uh, 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 what God would have the church to do. But it says, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. Again, this is more than you and I can grasp. that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, pause with me for a moment. Could you imagine the places that we could go and the things that you could do if we were filled with the fullness of God? 
No matter how close we want to think we are, no matter how close we are in fellowship, if we was filled with the fullness of God, what would be the, 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 the driving force of all of our decisions and things that we decided to do? What would uh, 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 make us want to get out of bed in the morning? It would be the fact that uh, we would want to go and to spread the gospel, to spread Christ, to, to, to teach that love. And if we were to be real honest with ourselves and others, oftentimes that don't enter into our mind until after an opportunity has passed. Well, maybe I should have spoke Christ to them. That's not always our central driving force that we get up with each and every day because oftentimes as people, as, uh, as individuals, we can, uh, uh, we can wind up being uh, focused upon ourselves and where our, our, our lives, if you will, can wind up being this big and we're focused on, well, I've got to do this and I've got to do that uh, and this is going on today and that and well, uh, we've got to get to this point because it, all these different things, but we're not ever fully focused upon the other man and their needs. But once we get to the fullness of God, the other's needs take place of ours. But as Paul's praying, he says, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Now, who's that speaking of? Uh, able to do more than we ask or think. We've talked about prayer on multiple different occasions and uh, how we pray, the, uh, the way that we pray, what we pray for. You can find in Scripture that, you know, it's the Spirit who, uh, uh, who interprets for us because we don't exactly know uh, what it is that we need to say or how to say it anyways. Uh, there's been times that I've knelt down in prayer and uh, all I was able to say is, uh, 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 Lord, you know, uh, well, uh, yeah, you get it. And that was the gist of the prayer, but God knew exactly what was on my heart. He knew what I was feeling, and that's the magic of those things. And when you look at that, it's now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. That's when you get into the point that the prayer that you pray is more important when it comes from the heart and not from your mouth. Feel the prayer when it's talking about uh, uh, being a uh, uh, pray constantly, to pray without ceasing, all these things. That is a feeling. That is the, something that truly comes from your heart. It's not something that you just say. And friend, with faith in Christ, he is able to do more than you ask. He's able to go and say, well, I understand that you was praying for this. But we're going to take it a step farther. He's able to do more, and he's able to... You know, the Bible, it puts it plain and simple. With Christ, anything is possible. He goes on to say, uh, in places of the Bible, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, there's no sense in us praying without faith knowing that God is able to do unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. It's not just what you ask, but then thinking on the manners. that you think of best case scenario, this, that, and Christ is able to one-up even your thoughts. I think maybe it should go this route. And then God is able to take control. But that is uh, only after all these things that we are uh, strengthened from the inside. That it is a spiritual manner and it's not just a physical thing. That when we're uh, rooted and, and grounded in love, in the love of Christ, in, the love, in, in loving as Christ loves us. Looking at a big picture, able to see all these things and being filled with the fullness of God, that's when we get into the point. For in that's when we're into the point that God is really able to work in our lives when we are focused on being obedient, when we're focused on a, a service unto Him. 
It says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Now, the understanding exactly what is said there, that is not the power that works around us, friend. It's not the power that you could uh, 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 pick up the phone and call and receive at a certain appointment. Friend, it says the power that is in us. Those are things that you have access to. That is, again, why you can read in Scripture that we as born-again believers, we will stand without an excuse. Inexcusable not to be able to do these things because God has given us that power. We have access to it. Not only has He given us a spirit that dwells with it is, but friend, along with that came the, the power of God. But it takes our faith to access that. And in verse 21, it says, Unto him be glory in the church. Unto him be glory in the church. We in a time and in a current time, in our present state, in all the, uh, it's not only in local areas, but it's, uh, it, you wouldn't think it would just be uh, in, in mega churches and things such as that. But friend, oftentimes we're quick to give glory into a man or to a woman or to this or to that. We're quick to give glory, well, you know, because of this uh, 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 big new fancy building we've got here, we, we drew more people in. You know, it's a good thing we did the building. You know, because of uh, 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 this or because of that. Friend, the glory goes to God. We talked last week that even though one sow, another in water, God's the one giving the increase. And it's talking here and it says, Unto him be glory in the church. Friend, if God is not getting the glory in the church, then the church has a spiritual problem. The church could have a leadership problem. The church could have uh, any numerous problems. But to Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. That means at no point, at no point, at any given time, should anything else be worshipped and given glory inside the church other than God through Christ Jesus. That means you're preaching through Christ. That means that you are led by Christ. That means that you are giving service unto Christ. That means Christ is still the focal point. That is the gospel. As we talked, so, uh, referenced last week so many times, they go hand in hand. <laughs> Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages and throughout all the world. Without end. As important as Christ is now to the church, friend, at the next point of the church, when the church finally gets to go home to be with Christ, Christ will be the focal point. Heaven will not be a democracy. It won't be a majority vote. Well, the majority of the people want to do this. Friend, it is, God, it, it is the, through the authority of Christ. He sets up His kingdom. He is the King of kings. To him be glory in the church by Christ, Jesus throughout all ages, throughout all the world without end. Amen. Friend, the church has such an important role to fill. The church has such an important part in, in God's plan and in his purpose. But the church has to be focused upon God and what God would have the church to do.